Welcome to Election Speak Out. With me tonight is Scott Hansen, running for State Senate from District 25. Welcome, Scott. Glad to have you with us. Thank you very much. I have a few questions for you tonight. Okay. First question being, why are you running for Senate? <laughs> well, that's a good question. That's probably the first question everybody asks me. And um, my wife Kathy and I have nine children together, and they're grown and gone now. And not one of our children lives in the state of Oregon. Um, it's not because they didn't want to. Some of them wanted to come back to Oregon to get to work and to live, but they couldn't get jobs here or they couldn't afford to live here. So I'm running so that my kids and everybody's kids in this community can come back to Oregon and live here and work here in Oregon. I've uh, been involved in this community my whole life. I've born and raised here in Gresham. Um, this is my home and love East County, love the part of the world that we live in. But right now, the things that are happening in East County just aren't making an environment so our kids can come back home, can live here. Um, and get good jobs here. And so I want to go down to Salem to make a difference. I'm going to go down there and, and try to instill an environment in the state of Oregon where we can get good employers to come to Oregon. We can get the jobs that we need here so our kids can work and live here. I've been involved in, in Gresham my whole life. Um, years ago, I was on the Gresham Borough School Board or the Gresham Grade School Board. I served on various committees with the schools. So I've been involved in, in different areas and aspects of the community and the schools. And I've always felt a desire to give back to my community. A couple of years ago, um, some people approached me, or actually last year, some people approached me and asked me if I would consider running for the state senate. And so after some arm twisting and some talking, I decided that, yeah, it was time for me to step up now that my kids are all grown and out of the home. And I have an opportunity to, to give time back to the community. In the past, I've always been so busy raising my kids, um, coaching their teams, you know, being involved in their school activities that it wasn't quite right time for me to run. But now with the house empty, um, besides my wife and I, and with the energy and the passion to, to make things happen in Oregon, I decided now is the time to do that. I want to see our community become a, a better community to live, a safer community, a community where jobs are here, where we have a good education system that will train our kids for jobs that they want to get and can get um, here in Oregon. And so that's why I'm running for Senate, so that my kids and your kids um, can live across the street, not across the nation. And I appreciate that because I was born and raised here myself, and I'm a mother of young children, and education is very important to me and to my family. Um, how will you ensure that education um, is, how is education a priority of yours? Well, thank you for asking that. I, like I said earlier, I, I did serve on the Gresham Grade School Board years ago on their budget committee. And then for seven years, I served on the Gresham Borough Education Foundation, where our sole purpose was to um, raise funds to give to the, to the classroom. Teachers would apply for grants through the foundation, and they continue to do that today. And we were able to give money to the various teachers for things in the classroom that the, currently the legislature wasn't funding enough to be, allow those things to go to the classroom. For example, um, when I was on the foundation, we started uh, the Reading Matters. It was a phone-a-thon that we started in the Gresham Barlow School District. What it was is we'd call all the parents in the district and, and other interested people in the community and ask them to donate to the Gresham Barlow Education Foundation. And the money that we raised um, started a reading program for kindergarten through third graders for kids that were struggling with their reading. And so that was a program that I started and ran for the years, the, for the last four years that I was on the foundation board. Because I understood how important it was for kids to be able to read. If you can't read by the time you're in third grade, the chances of succeeding in high school go way down, and in life really, because without that foundation of reading, um, it's a struggle for those poor kids. And so I, I felt sorry that we weren't able to provide the kind of services that we really needed to. And so we started that reading program, and it's been a huge success for the Gresham Barrow School District. Also, when I was on the, the grade school board years ago, um, not the grade school board, well, actually the, the budget committee for the Gresham Barlow School District, um, they asked me to be the chair of that, that budget committee. And so I was, as the chair one year, um, the superintendent and the district staff presented a budget to us, to the budget committee. And on there, there was a cut. They had to, you know, just like today, you know, there's always cuts, it seems like, in, in schools. And while I was serving as the, the chairman of that committee, um, they were trying to cut outdoor school. That was their proposal, was to cut outdoor school. And having gone to outdoor school as a sixth grader at West Gresham Grade School, I loved the program. My kids had gone, you know, several, half of my kids had already gone through the outdoor school program. And there was no way I was gonna let that happen um, to the rest of my kids who hadn't been through that program yet. So I fought to keep that um, outdoor school program at that time for the Gresham Barrow School kids. It was that passion that I took to that, that budget committee. It was the desire I, I had to make sure that things 
that were important to me and important to families in our district didn't get cut. And so we had to make choices. We had to cut some things because there wasn't enough money for the, all the programs we wanted. Mm -hmm. But I worked hard to make sure that that wasn't cut. So I understand what sometimes we do have to make choices when it comes to schools. But we need to do better at funding our schools. Since 1997, um, the state budget has gone up 120%. At that time, in 1997, schools received 16% of the state budget. But as the budget went up, as the revenue, all the money went up, the funding for state schools actually decreased. So instead of being 16% of the state budget like it was in 1997, that percentage is now less than 10%. Mm -hmm. So every politician always seems to say, hey, you know, schools are a priority. That's my number one priority is the schools. But it seems to me that the actions of the past legislatures have not represented that. They haven't reflected the fact that we, the schools are being funded at a less percentage than they once were. I would make it a top priority to make sure that we fund education because without the education, without, you know, we keep cutting programs, we cut shops, we cut you know, automotive programs, we cut the programs to build homes that teach valuable skills that, that we need in our communities for good jobs. And those are good jobs that kids, kids can get right out of high school, but when they cut those programs, we think we're saving money, but in the end, what we're doing is we're cutting jobs. We're cutting the ability mm -hmm. for good employers to find jobs for our kids. And not just at the high school level, but also at the community college level. Mountain Community College is in our district. What a great resource we have in this area. I would work hard to make sure that we ha that Mount Hood Community College got the funding that they need to continue some of these programs. There's a lot of, they're working with businesses to have externships and internships to for companies to actually help um, fund some of the programs at Mount Hood Community College to bring, so that they will have the trained workers that they need for their businesses. And so I would work hard in the legislature to make sure that we funded adequately the schools, not just K through 12, but our higher education as well. Mm -hmm. um, one of my daughters, um, who actually lives in North Carolina at this time, her husband got accepted to graduate school here and they wanted to come live home because mom would be a good babysitter for the grandkids. So, but that wasn't to be because she couldn't get a job here. But she did get a good job in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, North Carolina happens to be the home for, it's called the Research Triangle, where um, Duke and North Carolina State and University of North Carolina are all located centrally in, a, in this area of North Carolina. And because they have such good higher education programs that train engineers and technicians and all these good trained professionals that they need, businesses want to locate there. We don't have that in the state of Oregon. So funding those kind of programs as well, not just K through 12, but also higher education is a high priority for me because what that does is allows businesses to grow, businesses to thrive in Oregon so that our people, the people right now that are struggling in finding jobs in Oregon can find good jobs because employers and industries have come to Oregon because we have a highly trained workforce that they need to supply those jobs. So it would not only benefit our kids, our schools, but it would benefit the whole state of Oregon because it could turn the economy around when we properly fund education. So it is my goal to ensure that we do fund education properly mm -hmm. so that we can train our kids to not only be good workers, but to be good citizens and to be a, an active and vital part of our community. We need to stop exporting our number one priority, which is our, our number one resource, which is our children. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate your passion in that. Um, another question is, my husband, he rides the MAX to downtown Portland every day. How can you assure our safety? Well, and you know, I've been in business for 22 years here in Gresham, um, downtown Gresham. I've got my office. I've ran my business for 22 years, and, and my, my office happens to be about 100 yards from the MAX line. And, and I, we need public, good public transportation. But um, one thing that I would work hard to ensure is that, that we need to do something about the safety on, on, on the MAX line. Mm -hmm. I was talking to the chief of police just the other day and every, every police agency, every police officer in this area knows, unfortunately, that sometimes crime follows those mass transportation systems, particularly MAX, because you can get on the train without paying. Um, I visited Washington, D.C. where the metro is and I don't see the same kind of people riding the metro because you have to pay to get into the system. Mm -hmm. So I would work to find the funding to make sure that we and close those MAC stations. I think that would do more to help us in our community um, and close those stations so that everybody who rides the train has to pay to get on it. Mm -hmm. And also, one thing that <laughs> what I would like to do is, is to help the economy in, in East County because um, your husband has to go to Portland every day to work. I have a lot of friends who, who have to go to Portland to work. In fact, the majority of the people who work 
who live in, in the East County area, they live here, but they don't get to work here because there aren't jobs here. Mm -hmm. If we had a better economic environment out in East County, if we had more good employers, if we had a lot of good industry out in this area, people wouldn't have to take Max to go to work. They wouldn't have to get stuck on the Banfield Freeway going to work at, every day. Um, and you say, what's that got to do with public safety? Well, I'm convinced that when parents are home with their children more, children get in less trouble. Um, they're more supervised. They have better things to do when their parents are at home. If we spend two, three hours a day commuting to work every day, that means that's hours spent away from our families. So I would work hard to ensure that we got good employers out in this area so we wouldn't have to, like your husband, wouldn't mm -hmm. have to take the max to work every day. Um, they could stay home and work. I like to think that I've got one of the greenest jobs there is because I, it takes me seven minutes to get to work if the light is red. If it's green, I can make it in six minutes. So I would work for those good green jobs because I believe that if we live in the community that we work in or work in the community we live in, um, it's not only good for safety, it's good for all of us. I agree, thank you very much. Um, so my last question, why would you be better um, than your opponent? Um, well, I'm running against uh, somebody who's been down in the legislature for the past um, 12 years. And the state of Oregon voted for term limits years ago, but the Supreme Court of Oregon threw that out um, the only way to get incumbents out is to run against them. And I think we need more good people to step up and run against um, the incumbents. Not that it's good or bad, it's just I think that change is good. I think change in any environment, in any industry, in any place that we go, fresh ideas are always good. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm not a politician, I'm just a dentist in town here. I've worked forever um, and signed the front side of a paycheck as well as the backside of a paycheck. So I understand what business is all about. My opponent doesn't have that business background that I have. I understand what regulations do to people who run businesses. I understand what sometimes the laws that the legislature passes, how that affects my ability to hire new people or to keep the people that I've hired on at good paying wages. And so I bring that experience to the table. But I also have a great desire to, to be a statesman. Um, I don't have any desire to go down there and I know that I'm not gonna get my way and everything. I'm not a dogmatic kind of person. I'm able to listen to people. I'm able to hear both sides of the story. I've got, you know, I probably got three or four or five of my kids, depends on which issue we're talking about, that don't agree with me on political issues. And it's great because I love to talk with them and get their input and, and learn from them because they have a different way of looking at things than mm -hmm. I do. I can listen to anybody and learn from them. And that's a, a, a talent, an ability I want to take to Salem, to be able to work. You know, everybody says they're gonna be bipartisan, everybody says they're moderate, but I really, over the years, serving on various boards and committees, I've developed that talent of working with people. I'm sure that most people who I've served with on various committees and boards in my profession or with the school districts um, have no idea what my political philosophies are because that's not important. Mm -hmm. What's important is going down there and getting the job done. And I have the ability to work with people and to get that job done, to be a statesman, not just a politician. Mm -hmm. I want to do what's best for Oregon, and that's my desire. Great, thank you so much, Scott.